What's going on everyone? Metalblade427 here, and I present to you Five Nights at Freddy's 2. A sequel that's really a prequel in terms of the storyline. Well, it is generally accepted by the community as being a prequel, though I don't think Scott ever really made an official announcement about it. He does really love giving his fans little bits of information, keeping us on our toes, and letting us fill in the gaps with our own imagination. And let me tell you, Five Nights at Freddy's 2 not only answers a few questions from the first game, but opens up a whole can of new ones in this one. But I digress, Five Nights at Freddy's 2 was released in November of 2014 by Scott Cawthon. And this was only a few months after the release of the first game, so it was fairly close together. This is, again, a point-and-click survival horror game in which the player plays as a new security card, Jeremy Fitzgerald. It's the player's job to make sure Jeremy survives his nights inside the walls of the quote-unquote new and improved Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And while going around that, uh, we have just to make sure, uh, using all the new stuff in front of us, to make sure we survive as many nights at Freddy's as we can. Going back to what I said before about this game being generally considered a prequel, that's because of things like the endgame check having a date in 1987 and the money we earn matching up to the minimum wage of that year, which I guess wouldn't really make a difference, but the first game matches up to the 1990s, so there's something to it. There's also no mention of the bite of 87. The phone guy has returned in this game. We thought he was dead from the first one. And then there's a few other things here and there that pretty much really solidified this one coming before the first one in terms of timeline, even though this has a 2 at the end of it. This does happen, people. Just look at the Godfather series. The second one happens before the first one, even though it's Godfather Part 2. Best example ever. In Five Nights at Freddy's 2, the nights are shorter, only 7 minutes long compared to 8.5 in the first one, but now you have to deal with 11 animatronics, and I'll introduce to them as we go through uh, the nights. So to say the least, things are definitely a bit trickier than the first one, and in my opinion, Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is harder because there's such a smaller margin of error that you have for this one, especially when they jump into your room. Plus there's that music box. Oh, I hate that music box so much, but it's part of the game and you gotta do it. Uh, I will again not be doing any type of face cam, you can see my mouse here, woohoo! So that'll be your reaction point, and I think that's about it for the introductions. Let's jump in and learn how to survive in the new and improved Freddy, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. So again, we have a newspaper clipping here expressing what it is. You have a lot of flavor text written by Scott that's quite funny around it. And as you can see, $100.50 a week. That's less than the first one. Oh boy. Here we go. Alright, just like in Friday Nights at Freddy's 1, we will be receiving a phone call every night from Phone Guy. So let's listen and see what he has to tell us. Uh, hello. Hello, hello. Uh... Hello and welcome to your new summer job at the new and improved Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Uh, I'm here to talk you through some of the things you can expect to see during your first week here and to help you get started down this new and exciting career path. Uh, now, I want you to forget anything you may have heard about the old locations, you know. Uh, some people still have a somewhat negative impression of the company. Uh, that old restaurant was kind of left to rot for quite a while, but I, I want to reassure you, Fazbear Entertainment is committed to family fun and above all, safety. They've spent a small fortune on these new animatronics. Uh, facial recognition, advanced mobility, they even let them walk around during the day. <laughs> Isn't that neat? <clears throat> but most importantly, they're all tied into some kind of criminal database so they can detect a predator a mile away. Heck, we should be paying them to guard you. Uh, now that being said, no new system is without its kinks. Uh, you're only the second guard to work at that location. Uh, the first guy finished his week, but complained about conditions. Uh, we switched him over to the day shift. So, hey, lucky you, right? Uh, mainly he expressed concern that certain characters seemed to move around at night, and even attempted to get into his office. Now, from what we know, that should be impossible. Uh, that restaurant should be the safest place on Earth. So while our engineers don't really have an explanation for this, the working theory is that the robots were never given a proper night mode. So when it gets quiet, they think they're in the wrong room. So then they go try to find where the people are, and in this case, that's your office. So our temporary solution is this. There's a music box over by the prize counter, and it's rigged to be wound up remotely. So just every once in a while, Switch over to the prize counter video feed and wind it up for a few seconds. 
it doesn't seem to affect all of the animatronics, but it does affect one of them. Uh, and as for the rest of them, we have an even easier solution. You see, there may be a minor glitch in the system, something about the robot thing he was an endoskeleton without his costume on, and wanting to stuff you into a suit. So hey, we've given you an empty Freddy Fazbear head. Problem solved. You can put it on any time and leave it on for as long as you want. Eventually, anything that wandered in will wander back out. Uh, something else worth mentioning is kind of the quirky modern design of the building. You may have noticed there are no doors for you to close. <laughs> uh, but hey, you have a light, and even though your flashlight can run out of power, the building cannot. So don't worry about the place going dark. Well, I think that's it. Uh, you should be golden. Uh, check the lights, put on the Freddy head if you need to. Uh, keep the music box wound up. Piece of cake. Have a good night, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Alright, well that was a fairly long uh, phone call, but it pretty much gives us an idea of what some of the new things we have to experience here in this particular game. Go away, Chica. So, we have a lot of new animatronics in order to deal with right now. Like I said, there's 11 of them in total. And on night one, you have three of them that will be kind of doing their thing coming around you. First off, we have... Where did Chica go? Oh, you're right there. Okay, we're gonna put that mask right on. That's one of our new defensive strategies. Alright, good. Hearing her walk away. Good. That was pretty quick. Okay, so as I was trying to point out before, we have a bunch of new animatronics running around right now. We have the toy versions of our favorite characters. Here is Toy Bonnie. We have Toy Freddy up there. And then we were just visited by Toy Chica a little while ago. She's back out in the hallway. I don't know why Chica loses her little beak thing, but it's kind of weird when she uh, leaves the stage. The only real ways that we have to defend ourselves, as the guy said, is that we have this, this Freddy Fazbear mask. Apparently, if the animatronics see you wearing the mask, they will think that you're one of them and they will walk away. Generally speaking, that works. There are a few that that does not work for, but we'll worry about that later. As far as our old friends are concerned, back here in the parts and service section, we have these old kind of withered or rotten or broken versions of uh, the old ones, Bonnie, Freddy, Chica and Foxy is back there actually, so we have to make sure to keep an eye on them, but not for tonight. Oh, you're about to, Toy Bonnie's about to jump into the grate. Isn't that cute? Oh, so are you. That's wonderful. In addition to the mask, we also have uh, our flashlight. As you can see, we do have a set power amount of the flashlight up there, so that will run out eventually, but the, it's quite a bit. You have to kind of really over abuse the flashlight for it to finally run out. So there's that. Just trying to keep that music box wound because that music box is a very important thing. That is one of the new animatronics as well. So you have the four originals, Foxy, uh, Bonnie, Chica, and Freddy. You have the toy versions of Bonnie, Chica, and Freddy that we see. Uh, Foxy's toy version is actually found over here. A dismantled mess of things called the Mangle. We will deal with her a little bit later. Inside of the box itself that we have to keep winding up is the puppet. If you do not wind up the music box, oh, go away, hang on, we're going to make uh, Toy Bonnie go away right here. Toy Bonnie's one of the few that actually has like kind of an animation to him in terms of when you know when he's gone, so that's always a good thing. If you do not wind up the music box all the way, the puppet will escape from the box and charge at you, and that's pretty much the same thing as the lights going out from Five Nights at Freddy's 1, you, you are dead. In addition to that, you have uh, uh, animatronic to the left over here, which I would like to show. I showed a few times. That's Balloon Boy. There he is. He doesn't do anything. He's not very uh, aggressive, but if he makes it into your room, you will no longer have the ability to use your flashlight, and that can be very dangerous because the flashlight is the only thing that keeps Foxy away, and Foxy is a very, very annoying uh, animatronic to deal with starting on night two. And then the last one, of course, is Golden Freddy, but we won't have to deal with him until at least night six. Maybe he may come out in night five, but I'm pretty sure night six is the only time that we'll have to really deal with uh, Golden Freddy. You're in the vent. Do we have anybody else here up there? That's fine. And uh, that's really all we got to worry about. Make sure you keep using your flashlight. Use the lights on the side in order to see anybody in the vent. Those do not use flashlight power. And we are done. 6 a.m. Seven minutes. Nice and civil. Um, hooray, hurrah, woo, night one is easy, I'll see you at the main screen. Alright, so night one was pretty basic. Uh, again, only those three, these three animatronics were coming at you throughout the night, otherwise that 
you know, all you really had to worry about was keeping that music box wound, and that's really it. Mangle has a very low chance of actually activating on night one, and even if he does, or she does, whatever, it, the gender's is random, uh, she probably won't make it to your office until... Well, it'll be the end of the night before she even makes it anywhere clear to it. So it's just Toy Bonnie, Toy Chica, and Toy Freddy that you would have to worry about, plus the marionette. As uh, the nights progress, uh, the music box will unwind faster, so you got to keep an eye on it. And if you end up not t paying attention to it after a while, in the bottom right corner of your screen, it'll be like around over here-ish or so, uh, you will actually see a triangle go from yellow to red, and that's pretty much warning you that the music box is about to run out. Once it runs out, the marionette starts to rise up out of the box, and once it leaves the box, well, you're boned. That's pretty much it. It's done. <laughs> But there's so much more to talk about in this game than what Night 1 could actually have to offer. Uh, night 2, you're going to start seeing the activation of more uh, of the animatronics, and things are just going to get much more hectic as time goes on. So, with that said, please rate and comment down below, and if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can get equipped with me, Metal Blade 427 Until the next night, everyone, you have a good one, and I will catch you all later. Thank <laughs> you.